Welcome back to Good Energy, where we talk sports and tennis, and we're back at the Wimbledon Great Britain. That's right, the championships, the most historic slam there is. And we're going to take a look at the concluded matches for the round of 64, as well as the upcoming matches today for the round of 64. And we may even get into a little bit of the round of 32 as things start to shape out. Remember, only one can win the trophy. Yuvon and Galfi. This was a pretty good match, guys. Galfi is playing really, really good, but Yuvon looked the best friend of Iga Swiatek. Things might be coming together for her. She's still pretty young, but she's looking pretty good on the court. Anjabor took a set to figure out Kawa. Look, they split their previous uh, two meetings, and Anjabor now owns a head-to-head. -head. The second set looked like in-form Anjabor that we're used to seeing as of the last couple months. Watch out for Anjabor. Marie Sakri and uh, Victoria Tomova. Tomova's got a good backhand. She's strong, but like I said, watch out for her in the qualifying stages. That's when she has the best value. Big U. Uh, good win for Big U. Big U's a good defensive player. I'd like to see how far she can take this. She is frustrating to play against, guys. Keep that in mind. Allison Riss looked horrible that first set. She pulled it together. I'm not sure what it was, but that was good value on her in the second and third set. Diane Perry. Look, can she keep the Cinderella run up? I think she can. Caroline Garcia over Radicanu. Caroline Garcia faces Zong next. I might do a little bit of a snippet for the round of 32, but Caroline Garcia on Joe Comotale Boom, she looks good. Angelique Kerber over Magda Lynette. We knew that would happen. That's not really a shocker. Pliskova and Martinsova had to resume after suspended play due to uh, darkness. And Pliskova, look, I don't know. It's a shaky win. Uh, I mean, Martinsova's been very active lately, but Pliskova, a little too close for comfort for her. Watch out. Kasuk. Being routed in straight sets by Zong. Zong was great value. I mean, Zong was the underdog there. You gotta love that. Annette Conteve, that's the big, big upset, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I told you guys, Jill was going to beat her. She certainly did. Look, Conteve hasn't looked good. You know, she's uh, in the middle of working with a new coach. She hasn't been that active. Um, I don't know, a lot of partying on her social media, but um, I think as, just like last year, as you roll around to heart, I think she'll be back. And Kylina, upset it by a fellow countrywoman. Look, I knew that would happen. She's, she's, I don't think she's, for a top 30 player, I don't think she's that mobile, to be honest with you. I think she just wants to hang out on the baseline. You make her move forward a little bit. She's beatable. All right, guys, let's get some preview and predictions here for the in the round of 64. Iga Swiatek, um, I'm not sure what's going on with that match. Um, I, I don't know if um, I don't know if it's going to be played, but I think look, I like Iga to win in straight sets. Uh, Lou and Elise Cornet. Look, it's good to see Elisa doing pretty good here. I mean, she's a veteran, and she she's been talking about retirement. So who knows how much longer she has left? Uh, very very. Impressive win over Yulia Putin Seva. If you beat Putin Seva, you can definitely beat um, Claire Lou. But just a reminder, um, Elisa Cornet, she's 28 and 35 on grass. So this is her worst surface. She has a losing record on grass, but the last couple of years, she's been 9 and 5 on grass. And I do think the, the win over Putin Seva is pretty, I mean, it's a good win because Putin Seva, I actually thought would beat Elisa Cornet. But one thing I do notice, um, when you win a match you probably should have lost that next match it, reality normally sets in uh, Claire Lou has not looked that great I mean she has won six of her last ten but um, no real tough competition that she's facing at least um, I mean she faces the best of the best normally in each tournament and I mean there is a big age difference here and Claire Lou is ten years the junior to Lisa Cornet, so that's going to be a huge athletic boost there. They've never played each other. Claire Lou, again, just like most Americans, not a huge grass career. She's only 12 and 9. Um, this might shock some people here, but uh, I like Claire Lou to win at least one set. And 
that's going to be very good value. It might even be an upset, ladies and gentlemen. I like Claire Lou to win at least one set. And if she can win one set, she can definitely beat Elisa Cornet. If I had to pick a winner, uh, I, I'd take Claire Lou for the upset. But nonetheless, the official pick is for Lou to win at least one set. I said Tom Janovic versus Harrison. Look, you guys, I know you're not used to seeing Isla as a 5-1 to one favorite. Certainly not. Not even in the qualifiers do you see numbers like that. That is insane and completely ridiculous. That's madness. Um, but that's what's going on in this tournament. Uh, Isla on grass, she's 33 and 26. 10 and 5 the last couple of years on grass. And look, she's she's split 5 of her last 10. I mean, the win over Jill Tyke was a good win, but... We all know Jill Teichman is not a good grass player. It's her least favorite surface to play on. Harrison's 4-1 on grass this is her only um, year she's played on grass. And look, she's on a four-match win streak. She's come through qualifiers. I like this match. And look, the odds makers are saying Isla should win this match to the tune of 6-2, 6-2. But nah, I don't really think so. I'm going to take uh, Catherine Harrison to string together some wins here, and I like Catherine Harrison to take this thing to go over. So I like the over 17 and a half games. I had to pick a winner. I'm going to pick uh, Isla Tomjanovic to win this match. She should win the match, but the official picks for this match to go over 17.5 games. I'm going to really blow through this and keep it quick. I'm not going to get too technical because there's a lot of matches here to pick 16 total. Uh, Barbara Kachikova and Victoria Golovic. Look, these two ladies have a huge uh, history together. They've played a total of four times. And uh, Barbara winning the most recent in Dubai of 2020. That was also on grass. She won that in straight sets. Uh, before that, Golovic beat her in Quebec. And the other data is from the ITF, which doesn't count uh, in terms of wins um, on the WTA tour level. But look, Guloba, she's four and three on grass this season. She's 12 and seven the last couple of years on grass. And Guloba, she's won five of her last 10. Barbara Pachikova is, she's only won four of her last 10. Um, Barbara Pachikova has not looked good at all. And this is a match here where, you know, she's almost a two to one favorite, but the reality here is if she can be consistent, she is the younger player probably say she's the fresher player as well. I do think she can handle Victoria Golovic, so I like Barbara Pachikova. She's minus 180, and I like Barbara Pachikova on the money line, and that's a lock of the day. Enjoy, guys. And guys, remember, if you've listened this far, please make sure you like the video. 17 of 20, the first day of Wimbledon action. Overall, 83% win rate so far with all matches I've given out here. Guys, we have Menon and Kenwin. This is going to be a good match here, guys. I uh, have some Patreons here that are thinking about taking Kenwin to win it all. Me, I don't know about that, but she is playing really good, and her serve looks amazing. Look, players that have good serves, if you can, you know, work on your other tools when the ball's in play, that's when you start to get up to Serena Williams level, you know, that's a joke, Serena Williams has a hundred championships, these ladies can't even win one on tour nowadays, Serena has over 100, amazing, but Menon, she's 2-3 and three on grass this year, she's 7-5 and five the last couple of years on grass, Menon with the big win over Mogorosa, look, if Menon's going to make it to the round of 32, she's going to have to go through two giants. And Zhang with the win over Sloan Stevens. But look, overall, uh, Zhang's won seven of her last ten. And Zhang is only 19, guys. She's still growing, and she's very, very strong. She's got a good serve. However, though, if you follow Kenwin, you know that. And this is true with all players with good serves, is they double fault a lot. And when she's losing these matches, she's double faulting a lot. So which can win will we get today against um, Greedy Menon? We don't know. These two have never played each other. Um, but that win over Mogorosa is very, very, very impressive. 
and the reality here is if you beat Muguruza, you can definitely beat Kenwin. There's no doubt about that. Uh, however, I do like Kenwin on the money line. That's a fair enough price. Uh, and that is another lock. I like Kenwin to get to the round of 32. All right, this is where things are going to get a little, a little bit tricky with these, the rest of these matches here. A couple locks there for you. Enjoy those locks, guys. Elena Rabinkina. She's going to be taking on Bianca and dress you. A couple years ago, um, I'd say Bianca should be a favorite with these two playing right now. Um, I don't know if Bianca and dress you should really be the favorite here. Um, but Bianca and dress you, she is known for having a really good backhand. And she's in shape now. So her forehand's back to working how it should. And she's moving around the court how she should. She's in shape. Look at her pictures. Follow her on Instagram. She recently celebrated a birthday. She looks good. She's feeling good. But that loss to Caroline Garcia has to haunt her. Uh, Rabinkina, not really having a great season, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but she squeaked out six of her last ten for wins on grass. Look, she doesn't have the best grass record, but she has a winning record. She's nine and five the last couple of years. Sixteen and seven on grass overall. Bianca and Dress, who's 16 and 10 on grass. These two ladies have never played each other. And the matchmakers that set this draw did a great job of pairing new players up against each other. Just looking at this match right away, we got two different styles. Uh, Rabinka knows that she is very heavy handed, extremely heavy handed. She is an amazing server. And if her serve is on, she's going to win service games. On the flip side of that, Bianca and Dress, who, she's very. She's mobile now. She's fit and she's very strong. And I say all the time, you know, the type of players that frustrate Elena Rabinka and um, those other shorter, stronger players. And Bianca Andreescu does fit that bill. Right away, I do think Elena should be the favorite. I don't think Bianca should be the favorite in this match, even though she did make the, the finals uh, last week. Um, but the reality here is I think Elena should be the favorite, and she's not. So there's great value on her. My pick here is the over. Uh, I like the first set to go over nine and a half games. I like the match to go over 21 and a half games. That's my pick. I like the over. If I have to pick a winner, I think all of the values on Elena, and that's who I would pick to win this match. And the reality is Bianca Andreescu looks, she'll look good the first set, but there's a drop in her level on the second set, and it happens over and over again. She drops her level with that serving rockets of uh, Rabinkina. She's going to be in trouble. Petra Marte versus Kukova. If you guys have never seen Kukova play, um, I'm going to give you another bit of advice. She is really good to watch out in the qualifiers. Uh, she's the type of opponent. She's got a really strong backhand, and that will get her through the qualifiers. She's she's a notch above the qualifying level at this point in her career. And she can normally have really good value in the qualifiers. She's going to be playing Petra Marchik. Look, Petra Marchik is one of my favorite players on tour. I love how she takes care of her body. She's very healthy. She eats clean. She's vegan for all that stuff. But Petra Martek has not looked good lately. Uh, she does have quite a history of Kukova. Uh, Kukova owns a head-to-head 2-1. And there's no way Petra Martek should be a 4-1 favorite in this match. There's no way. I would never lay 4-1 on Petra Martek to beat Kukova. Because Kukova is a short center of gravity, much like a um, Jasmine Pollyani. And Petra Martek, she's... She's... she's be a tall woman here. I mean, Kukova, if I'm not mistaken, is like what 5'5. Five, five. Petra Martic's like uh 5'11. Kukova's gonna have the advantage with her back end. To be honest with you, this is a match I like to go over my official predictions. I mean, they have this match set at like 18 games, and I don't I don't see how. I like the over. Petra Martic's an over player, so we'll take the over um, 18 games. If I had to pick a winner, I, I really would love Petra Marchuk to win, but I don't like those kind of numbers. Official picks the over, but if I have to pick a winner, I would go with Marchuk to get it done, but I'm not confident in her getting it done because Kukola has a strong backhand, and I could see that causing Petra problems. Petra hasn't looked good. She beat, she beat Shelby Rogers, who does have a good backhand, but she's lost 
uh, before that, she's on a four-game, four, four match with uh, losing streak. Lost to Bianca, which is good. Sinekova, I can see that. But Krunik, you should have won, and Baraj, you should have won. Those Krunik is not playing well and not serving well. Um, however, Kukova's only won three of her last ten, so I like the over, and we're gonna go with Petra Marchuk. Next matchup, uh, Harriet Dart versus Jessica Pagula. Not gonna spend much time on this. Uh, Jessica Pagula is a three to one favorite, and that's that's rightfully so. Um, she just beat Donna Beckett. She's Jessica Pagula this season. I mean, Dart's been playing good, but this is a huge step up in competition and. Dart is not a good grass player. Each of these grass surfaces are much different than the other. And Harriet Dart, she's had a good run this grass season. I mean, but for every five matches she plays on grass, she loses three of them. And Pugula's just a huge step up in competition, even though she's seven and four this year on grass. I mean, she's got some decent wins. She's beat. Uh, Kasuk, she beat Teichman, and she's beat Bringle, um, but no, she's not going to beat Jessica Pagula, and I don't want to spend any more time on this match. I like Pagula to win in straight sets and money line. This match here, um, I mean, Paula Bedosa is like a huge favorite. Paula Bedosa is like a, what, 20 to 1 favorite? That's like ridiculous. Um, but Paula Bedosa, look, she's the fourth seed. She's supposed to win this match. You can see that 18-1 favorite to be exact. Um, but, I mean, she's playing someone that's hot. And look, this tournament is about being hot at the right time. Guys, did you see that? Did you see that Emma Raducanu uh, press conference today at Wimbledon? How um, the reporter said to her, you know, what do you think about the the critics that say, well, you've only won one championship, and that was, of course, of course, the U.S. Open, but you haven't really done much since then. And Emma's response was, well, I'm a slam champion, and I think that question should be directed at all the people that haven't won a slam champion, because you can never take that away from me. Great answer from Emma Raducanu, and Paula Badosa She's someone I would love to see win a slam champion, but I don't think, look, two years ago, Paula Bedosa was barely cracking the top 100. I mean, she started, like, last year ranked, look, don't quote me on this, but she started last year ranked, like, something, like, close to maybe just outside of the top 100 or maybe ranked 90th or something like that. She won a couple single titles. That's all she won last year was two single titles. But the big one being, of course, the Indian Wells. And look, she did. She had some good runs and some key tournaments. But the reality here is I love Paul Bedosa. But I have to be honest, I, I think she's in the, I think she has a worse stamina out of all the top 10 females on tour, and I think she's, in some ways, before An Shapur won her uh, championship this year, WTA 1000, and the, and the WTA 500 in Berlin, um, I thought An Shapur and Marie Sabri were two of the most disappointing top 10 players, and Paula Bedosa was kind of in that mix as well, but look, Paula Bedosa is... I think she is a future star. Um, I mean, she's not the youngest of the stars as it is. I mean, she's 25. But the reality here is, I think that Paula Bedosa, this is a match where she has to perform. She's the 18 to 1 favorite. The, the experts say she should win this match 6 2, 6 1, 6 love, 6 love, something like that. But I don't think she will. I like Barra to win at least a few games in the first set. I like the first set to go over 8.5 games. They're saying it won't. That will give you even return. First set over 8.5 games. And I like the match itself to go over 17 games. That's your official pick. And of course, Paul Bedosa will win the match. So Paul Bedosa will make it to the round of 32. Next, Anna Bogdan and Petra Kvitova. Anna Bogdan's playing pretty good, but I think Petra is one of those players that has a chance to go deep. And look, I love the left-handed 
rockets that she blasts off. She's won this tournament a couple times before, and I'm, I'm picking her to win. Just just take a bit of on the money line. Pretty decent price. And um, I'm keeping it simple, guys. I can't really get too technical talking about statistics and, um, you know, numbers. I'm just trying to keep it pretty basic here, or else this video would be an hour long. Um, Fretch and Smitlova. This is going to be an interesting matchup. These two, they've played once before, and Smitlova won that matchup. Fretch got the big win over Georgie, but... I mean, on face, Georgia was a 5-1 favorite, just like Isla Tomjanovic. When those ladies are these huge favorites, you want to stay away from that, okay? Now, Fretch, yes, she got the win over Georgia, but all you have to do is play discipline. I mean, easier said than done, but all you have to do is be a little disciplined to beat Georgia. Schmidlova makes a lot of mistakes, too, but Schmidlova, I feel should have the she should probably be this should be a 50-50 match. Magdalena Fred should not be a two to one favorite. There's there's no way. I mean she beat Camilla Giorgi, that's a good win, good for her. Smedlova beat Rebecca Peterson, who I feel Rebecca Peterson would have beat uh Giorgi. I think Rebecca Peterson would have beat Magdalena Fred. So I like I like this match to go over and I would mean Smedlova to win at least a set. If I had to pick a winner, I would pick Smedlova to beat Fretch. Um, that's like three picks in one, but I, I like the over as the official pick. If I had to pick a winner, I would take Smedlova as a 2-1 to one underdog. And Smedlova, she's just going to be a little bit more aggressive. I think that's that's actually going to pay off this time versus Georgie. Uh, Flipkins and Halep. I'm not gonna spend much time on this. I like uh, I like Caleb to beat Flipkins in straight sets as long as she's healthy. She hasn't looked healthy in Flipkins. She's been upsetting a lot of people lately, but I like Caleb to win in straight sets. She's another huge favorite, which is crazy. Uh, not a match I would even play, but I do think Caleb should win. All right, and let's get ready to wrap this video up. Coco Golf versus Buzzer and Shoot. Uh, I like Coco Golf on the spread here. Coco Golf is laying six games. I like Coco Golf to win something like 6-3, six, 6-2. Six, uh, I like Coco Golf uh, minus six games on the spread. I think it's going to be a blowout. Uh, and watch out for Coco Golf. She's got a chance to win this thing. This is this match right here is where she's going to prove if she has a chance to win this game. This is a match she needs to manhandle her woman handle her however the technical proper term should be but she i think she's going to win by at least six games this is a correct blowout that should be corn davis and amanda anisimova <coughs> two americans they know each other uh, amanda said she's she's um kind of played with Lawrence before um it's kind of funny she said yeah i kind of know of her so i mean look Two different stories, two different paths. Lauren is the veteran here, but I don't. Lauren, I mean, she's had a good run lately, um, but Lauren Davis, you never know what you're going to get with her, to be honest with you. Uh, these two ladies have never played each other before, but Lauren Davis, overall, I mean, look, she split her last. Uh, she split five of her last ten. Amanda Anasimo was actually won seven of her last ten. I don't know how, but when you look up, at the scoreboard, it's like she's either quitting or she's winning impressively. Um, it's a match that, to be honest with you, Amanda should win. She should really win, but you never know. If Lauren Davis shows up to play, she might even beat her. But, I mean, the, the reality here is I don't think Lauren Davis has the firepower. She's not a good server. And I just see a lot of mistakes. I'd take him in and it's more of a minus 1.5 spread on the first set. And of course, a man and it's more of a money line first set. But, um, that's that's not something I would even look at. It's, it's just two, it's two ladies that I just don't see fight in them. And they like, they like to quit. You can see it. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's not a match I would watch. Um, Tan, after being the great Serena Williams, guys, I have to remind you guys, Serena Williams has over 100 titles, whether that's single, uh, singles, doubles, mixed doubles, and some of 
these ladies don't even have one. So please respect the queen when you reference her name. Cerebus Termo, she's a good defensive player on clay, but I mean, to be honest with you, Tom versus Termo, I think Termo's going to beat her. Um, but it's not a match I would watch. Terminal's a 2 one favorite, so I take Terminal to win that match. And we're going to see what level she is compared to Terminal, because she did last with the great Serena Williams three sets, and some people thought she was toying with Serena Williams. Sometimes, I, to be honest with you, I watched the match. It looked times where she was extending rallies that she could have won. I don't know if she was just enjoying the moment or the crowd, but um, we're going to see where Tormal is really at. So I'll take Sarah Schreiber's Tormal as the uh, underdog. I'm pretty confident she'll beat Tom. And Katie Bolter versus Pliskova. You can say that's a lock. I'm confident Tormal will beat Tom. Katie Bolter versus Pliskova. Bolter's been playing good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if she beat Pliskova, to be honest with you. But I'm going to take Pliskova on the money line. Pretty reasonable odds. Guys, that's it for the picks. Uh, join me. I'm going to get a couple hours rest and we'll be back up to watch uh, when we're done. And we will see you then. This is good energy, guys. Enjoy the picks. If you've listened so far, please like the video. I appreciate all of the likes, comments. Um, we're at over um, a couple hundred thousand uh, views the last couple weeks. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you again.